All right, Fiberistas. Hey, welcome back to my live stream. It's really good to be back and it's really good. Um, I'm really happy that you're joining me. So anyway, um, I might be reaching up to turn this light on and off the cloud. It's kind of cloudy outside. So it's kind of sometimes this light's too bright and sometimes it's not. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, so welcome welcome back i hope you guys had a good holiday and a good new year um just a quick update on my mom um and thank you guys for everybody who sent me emails and notes and even voicemails um thanks i mean i really appreciate it it, it was a really tough time um but we got through it so um mom's doing good she's doing much better she's still in recovery she's not able to drive she's not able to you know do things like cook or stuff like that but she's she's getting a lot of her mobility back and she's learning how to remember her words um we can have a conversation but uh sometimes she forgets what she's trying to say or can't find the right words to say what she's trying to say so anyway but i'm really grateful that that she's recovering so fast and that she's doing real well so anyway thank you guys for everyone who has sent well wishes prayers thoughts and all kinds of good stuff because um, it really meant a lot to me and my family and I'm going to cry. No, I'm not going to cry. Okay. Anyway, so um, I've been working on some weaving um, and I'm going to share some of that with you today. Um, I'm also going to share with you a kind of a follow-up to the um, blog post that I wrote last week. And last week I talked about... Um, buying used equipment some tips on buying used equipment and it's it's because i've gotten a lot of questions in the facebook um uh, uh, fiber art collective about buying used equipment and I've, I've seen just a lot of questions about about stuff like that so i thought i would just kind of address it because i recently um bought a floor loom used and uh, sometimes that's just really the way to go uh, now now granted a lot of fiber equipment doesn't necessarily uh, lose its val um, loses its value. So a lot of times you don't find like gigantic discounts on on spinning wheels and looms. But sometimes you can find them, and it just takes a little searching. So anyway, so um, I've linked down in the description um, to last week's blog post, and that just gives you some kind of tips on on looking for used equipment online and today I'm going to share with you some of my favorite places to find used equipment and this is just kind of based on that I have recently went and bought my loom I'm gonna let me see if I can show you my loom without knocking everything off my table alright you see right here that's my floor loom and I bought it used I bought it at a uh, I bought it at a garage sale uh, somebody's mama died and uh, she was a weaver and and I got it for a really a really good price so anyway and uh, but first I wanted to share with you what I just wove on this so part of and and I kind of have not really gone into details about weaving on this loom because I don't want people to think that art weaving has to happen on a big expensive loom because I've done it on my sample and honestly I really like using a smaller rigid head of loom to do art weaving but I'm trying to learn how to translate that same style to a bigger floor loom because I really like this loom but um it's it's a it's totally different weaving on that wide of a width is different um the textures look different um weaving with uh shafts where you can do patterning is different it's a whole nother dimension to to what you're adding to the weaving and and even that's a little difficult for me to um to kind of add in i've been trying to and it kind of get i'm, I'm learning a lot anyway so here's what I've been weaving. Um, this, I, I warped for two big wraps on my rigid head of loom and I miscalculated how big they needed to be. And so I got one that was way too long and one that's way too short, but I think it's gonna be okay. Okay, so this is the one that's a little too short. 
All right, Let's see? Oh wait, that's the back side. Here's the front side, because it has this uh, little bit of texture here. This is a hand spun yarn with some locks in it. Let's see? Da -da -da. Anyway, so I I warped it with some thinner. You know, usually on the rigid heddle, I've been using sock yarns and a little bit of novelty yarn. So this time I'm using some weaving yarns, which are much, much thinner. And so it's kind of prompting me to go a little finer and, and it's, it's a whole nother ball of wax. I'm also using some, a lot of hand spun in here, but it's really, let me see if you can see, but it's really fine hand spun. Um, like my hand spun singles and it's usually stuff that I'm finishing off like I, I have some roving and I'm finishing off a little bit of that roving so anyway so I'm combining that and some lace yarn a little and so that's what I was doing here all right so th this is the small one now I I finished uh, doing the fringe and I wet finished this one but I think I'm gonna go back and see if I can um gently iron or steam steam block this one because I want it to be a little longer I mean it's kind of uh it's kind of it's 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 I mean it's okay if I was wearing it kind of like this and maybe with you know like a shawl pin or something here I don't know it's a little short so we'll see we'll see what happens all right so then this this piece this is the long one and I kind of like it but it's it's just a hair too long I think you know if I was going with you know I made one this length um, when I was using some thicker yarns and I think here I'll just show you because this one it's the same type of thing I'm I'm weaving with some finer yarns uh, I think the thickest I go well the art yarn the art yarn's kind of thick. I have uh, some dreads stuck in here and some sari ribbon. But honestly, I'm I'm going a, a good bit finer, and and I'm finding that um, doing art weaving with that's it's just different. I I don't know if I can explain it. <laughs> I know it's not helping. Okay, so mm, all right, let me show you. So this one, and this one hasn't been wet finished, so it's going to shrink up, but not by much. I mean, it's, I could have gone a little shorter, but I'm okay with it, really. I mean, I guess if I wanted to <laughs> loop it over and do, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I think it's okay. I'm okay with it. It's just, if when I do it again it's going to be shorter and then look at this I found okay so we have this place here called the scrap exchange it's a thrift store and it's I mean there's all kinds of crazy stuff there I might have mentioned it before I'll put a link in the show notes so I found they a lot of times they have um I think it's mill end yarn they have because you know I live in North Carolina and there's a lot of um we get a lot of textile um, remnants and stuff that show up at the thrift stores across the state. I mean, it, it, I used to find them in Asheville all the time. And here we're really close to more textile mills. So there's, if you can see, there's some really fine thread that I'm, I've woven in with this, but it really shows up that warp. Now this is this warp that I did, and this is a lot of weaving yarns. And here's like a chenille weaving yarn. And then there's some some kind of brown ribbon yarn that somebody gave me. I think, though, that that's a knitting yarn. And here I've used, like, this is the thickest I think I used. This is some worsted weight, hand-dyed. Anyway, so, so yeah, this is, so that's what I've been working on. Trying to translate all the stuff that I usually do on the rigid heddle to this other loom and ironically working with finer yarns on a bigger loom is a totally different animal so I'm kind of learning the subtleties of, of how to 
translate what I do. I mean, I'm used to, I mean, when I'm using bigger yarns on that small loom that the textures really pop, but they kind of get lost in the big field. So I'm, I'm playing and I'm figuring it out anyway. So that's what I've been working on. And I, uh, I finally got those, <laughs> those bracelets warped on that rigid head loom. I'll have to share that with you, but that's upstairs anyway. Um, so I'm going to play around with those and I've got to make another warp to put on this loom. And I'm tracking my time a lot better nowadays because I've been kind of weaving willy-nilly and I need to get organized about it. So that's what I've been working on. Okay. So like I said, I wanted to share with you about buying used equipment. And last week I gave, I wrote a blog post and shared some tips on buying used equipment. Um, so you can go back and read that post. I put a link in the description of this post. I think I did wait of this video. Yes. It's uh, titled six things to consider when buying used equipment. I think anyway, the links down in the description and I'll put it in the show notes too. I think it is in the show notes. If not, I'll link it in the show notes and that's on the blog. So, um, check out that post. But then today what I wanted to do is share with you some of my favorite places to find um, used equipment. And I did put together a document and it's in the Facebook group and I'm going to show you it. Let me switch the camera. All right. All right. So this is the Facebook, um, the Fiber Art Collective. And if you join us, uh, we have, I mean, people are sharing some really wonderful, inspiring things. Please sign up. It's, it's really, everybody's so supportive and it's inspiring. Anyway, so if you go into this group, if you can see right here, you can see where it says groups, uh, recent files, and it says resources for used equipment. And if you pop it up, this is going to give you links to some of my favorite places online to find used equipment. And I left it open so other members of the Fiber Art Collective could add to that, that group. So um, add to that document. Um, anyway, and you can sign up for the Fiber Art Collective. I put a link down in the resources in the, um, I put a link in the description of this video. All right. So, let me see. Okay, so what I wanted to share with you, let me go back to this thing. Some of my favorite things, places to find used equipment. One of my favorite places is Facebook groups. And there are a ton of Facebook groups in the marketplace. And this is where I was trolling this place constantly. And you can find all kinds of of used equipment at all kinds of prices. Um, oh, wait, am I going back to my thing? Wait. Okay, so you can find, and so there's several groups, and I've put them right here. Um, most of, some of them are international. So, I mean, there was a beautiful loom for sale in St. Petersburg, um, Russia. <laughs> it was a gorgeous loom, but I doubt I could get it here. Anyway, um, but there's, it's their looms mostly it's the United States so there's looms from all over the place but you can check out um, the links there and you probably will have to join these groups and they'll ask you a couple of questions but uh, it's free to join these groups and there's several of them and what I like about the the Facebook groups is that these groups end up um, whenever something's posted it shows up in your Facebook feed so you can see pretty pretty quickly what's available all right my other pl good place I like to look and actually this is where I found my loom and let me see if I can get to this is Craigslist <laughs> I found my floor loom on Craigslist and it was actually a um a listing for uh it was a listing for a um yard sale an estate sale and they actually mentioned loom in the listing so it popped up 
Um, usually I, what I do is I just, if you can see right here, I'll type in Loom and usually Craigslist goes right to your local area. So if I type in Loom, you know, here's a couple of Looms right here. Of course, you'll get things like this and you'll get all kinds of crazy things that they consider a loom. Um, and this is going to be from for the particular area. So I'm in the Raleigh-Durham area and that's what shows up here. But you can spread out your search by going up to this drop down menu here and you can see all these areas that are kind of close by. So like from Raleigh I can turn around and check maybe the Charlotte area and and then it'll start to pop up looms available in the Charlotte area and I can as as I search I can fan out like Athens Georgia I don't know that Athens Georgia is necessarily too far away for me to go for a really good loom I mean so you know and I can keep going like Huntsville my parents are in Huntsville so yeah I would consider going and shop me you know picking up a loom in Huntsville staying with my folks all right so that's how I search on Craigslist. Um, another really good place to look is your local fiber art collect fiber art guild. Um, I'm going to switch here. Now I belong to the Triangle Weavers Guild and they have a great classified section and here's here's their class. Th these are some of the looms that are for sale on that Weaver's Guild. Um, so you can check and see if there's a guild close by or check guilds that are, like I wouldn't be opposed to looking in Asheville. So I would check maybe, you know, Asheville. If they have a website, then chances are they're gonna have a classified section. All right, another one of my favorite places to look, and this is a really cool, cool page. This, and there's a link in that document, is this, um, this used equipment page. And it's got a ton of, of looms and spinning wheels and all kinds of stuff for sale. Now, granted, these are going to be a little pricier um, because most of the people who list on this page are definitely the, the fiber people who are selling them. Um, but you can find some like pretty, pretty rare looms or some pretty big, cool looms. Um, and there's a, a couple of other, you know, uh, listing housekeeping pages that that have that kind of listing, and I put them in the link. And you might also check Ravelry. Now, let me see if I can get to this one quickly. Um, there's one. This there's a. I've listed three in let's see if it's going to let me log in all right you have to you have to have a Ravelry account but you might be able I mean you'll be able to sign up for free um, and then you'll have to join the groups and um, but the groups they have listings of of uh, equipment now this is the spinners marketplace so it might have so these are spinning wheels now look somebody's selling a pat green super card Look at that. I've got one of those. It's really cool. Oh, I love that. All right. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> so, so yeah, you might check um, Ravelry, those Ravelry groups I've listed in that place. Another thing I like to, to check is you might check fiber festivals. Um, I'm going to go back to just me. Okay. You might check some fiber festivals. Now, um, at Fiber Festivals, you can get some new equipment. Definitely, they'll have vendors there from from shops that sell equipment. But they also have sometimes the vendors will have used equipment, and it might be just a random thing. I know when I had a booth and I was selling yarn, I a, a couple of times I had one of my friends spinning wheel in my booth. She was trying to get rid of it, and and so I brought it to my booth and she was able to sell it at SAF. So you might check at the fiber festivals. Um, another good place is if you have a, a, a place, if there's a place that sells equipment sometimes, and even at yarn shops, sometimes they'll have bulletin boards that might have that equipment there. 
I know um, specifically in Asheville Earth Guild. Now they sell new looms and spinning wheels and stuff, but they do have a really good bulletin board that has a lot of equipment. I mean a lot. And it's generally, um, uh, Western North Carolina has a big fiber community. So, so it's, you know, a lot of people will post stuff on that board. So that's a really good place to check too is the bulletin boards. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, I got my spinning wheel at an estate sale, so don't rule out estate sales. And you might also check auction houses. Um, sometimes auction houses, when they go in to, to take over, you know, and, and, man, and sell off somebody's estate form, it might be a fiber person. Um, and especially if you live in an area that have a lot of, of, of weavers and spinners and stuff like that, then um, auction houses might be a place where you can find a loom. And also, I would check, I wouldn't rule out your local, like, next door bulletin board um, that's an app that's on your phone, or um, the community groups in Facebook. They have uh, marketplaces that are for local areas. Like, I belong to the one for uh, Cary, uh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and Raleigh. And uh, sometimes things pop up on there so you might just check that it you know not necessarily fiber related but maybe your local source all right that being said um a couple of other things to consider if you're if you're buying used equipment um when you look at the equipment i would ask one of the things i would ask is if the seller is was actually the user of the equipment um i know that when i bought my loom um, the, the person who was selling it was not a weaver. Um, and that, it, that, that's a catch 22. I was able to negotiate a really good price. Um, but she also wasn't aware that the, um, the cables were rotted and, or that pieces were missing. Um, I bought another loom, a structo loom, and it was somebody, again, somebody's grandma, and she didn't know that uh, a couple of pieces were missing. And the instruction book that came with my floor loom was for a, a other loom totally all together. Um, another thing you also want to ask um, if the seller is the user is did they buy that loom new or did they buy it used? And I don't know if it necessarily would make a difference, but you kind of can get a gauge for the age of the loom. Um, you also might want to ask if um, the user, if the seller was the user, or even if it wasn't, if they had any idea when the last time that loom was used. Um, if you're not able to sit down and try that loom out, you might find that something could be jammed, especially with things like spinning wheels and drum carters. You might, if you're not able to try it out, you might want to get a gauge for when the last time it was used because you might have to do a repair on some of the equipment. You also might want to ask why they're selling it. Um, it could be that something's wrong with the loom, or it could be that they're doing an upgrade, or that they might have a physical disability that's not allowing them to use the equipment anymore. Just kind of get a gauge for that. And also you might want to ask if there's any extras. I mean, that kind of, and, and you can kind of get a gauge for prices as you start to, you know, frequent these sites and you kind of get a gauge for what the extras cost. I mean, you can go online and look at stuff that's new, but sometimes a lot of this equipment is, is, um, is, is not being made anymore. Like my Structo loom, and I didn't know it when I bought it that my Structo loom was not being made anymore. So I had to really do a lot of work to try and find replacement parts and it did need replacement parts and it took a while to get that pulled together. Um, but if you have a, if it's a new loom, a lot of times you can research how much parts cost and most used looms come with the extras. It might include a bench, it might include a warping board, or like with the spinning wheel, it might include extra spindles, um, which is awesome. Um, sometimes people will throw in fiber. And same for like a drum carter. You also want to make sure that you're not missing equipment. Like if I bought, when I bought my drum carter, um, I, a lot of times the drum carters don't come with the the um, bat pick, the doffer pin, the thing that you pull the bat up with. 
you want to make sure that you're able to get I mean it's easy to get those other parts but that's also something to consider as far as the price goes all right and if you're buying it from a long distance and I know there was some controversy over that last post I made because um, I know a lot of people have bought successfully sight unseen equipment from out of state and there is a Ravelry group that that does do transport kind of like a you know it's kind of like they do with rescue dogs well, they do it with rescue looms too that you can get a network of transport going on and get that loom to you but um, I've had a couple of friends who have bought equipment sight unseen and there was damage that wasn't evident in in the pictures so it wouldn't hurt if you're gonna do that a whoever's picking it up can they verify um, that the equipment I mean stand in for you as and, and and check that equipment as if you were there or if you're having it shipped which is kind of iffy because equipment you know unless they're going to disassemble it and put it in its original packaging shipping equipment can be kind of tricky I mean as sturdy as some of the equipment seems it it really is kind of fragile um, I had a friend who bought a beautiful Magicraft Aura wheel and when it arrived the head was cracked and it was because you know it wasn't evident in in the listing and so she she was able to get resolved through PayPal but it was not a good a good deal I mean she she had to fight that woman for about a month and it was not fun and it's not fun and I don't want to wish that on anybody so just be careful if you're gonna buy sight unseen I would just kind of 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 make sure um, you've you've got all the information if there's only like a handful of pictures ask for more ask, ask for them to send you a video of showing it in action and showing that it, it works and also to make sure that you hammer out um, if you're having it ship what happens if it arrives damaged what happens if there's damage can they guarantee that there's not damage and if it arrives and it, it is damaged how are you guys going to handle that so that's the only thing I know that a lot of people have had some good luck but I've heard some pretty big horror stories of times when it didn't work out anyway so there it is all right so sign up for the fiber art collective I put the link in the description and then it, you'll get access to that that document that has all the links of where you can find this equipment and also to the fiber art collective it's awesome uh, people are posting inspiring things and encouragement all the time and it's, it's a great place to hang out so anyway so thank you guys for joining me I'm really glad to uh, to see y'all let's see let's see who's Sue from Indiana hi thanks for joining uh, Elizabeth Rose who's my neighbor up in Franklin County Sandy Palmer from Scotland hey <laughs> and Marie Helen Marie Helen hello Stacy from France arriving to find the end of your meeting oh it's 9 30 there oh goodness <laughs> well have a good evening and thanks for joining me and i will be back next week so i will talk to you guys then thanks for joining and be sure to sign up for that uh that fiber art collective to get access to that document and um be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already anyway i will talk to you later bye I can remember how to turn this off. <laughs>